that's my favorite part of uh, growing a business right there is like I think now that there are so many companies that are sort of um, handcuffed to shareholders or to management that people are really scared to make mistakes. And I think the best businesses are the ones that are like, almost run it like a lab, like a calculated lab. And let's not be scared to fail and learn from that and grow and move forward, which is what I love what you, you're doing. Yeah, I think you have to have an element of experiment, right? You have to be willing to experiment with your company, but there's certain things you, you should not experiment with obviously, mm -hmm. you know, like you don't experiment with lowering people's wages. You know? <laughs> That's a bad idea. <laughs> you, you don't experiment with like cussing out your employees, you know, like from marketing and expansion, it makes it, yeah. It makes or it your clients, I would yeah, add yeah. that to the list. I have this rule in my firm that like one of our core values is respect and respect is both earned and given. So if a client disrespects you, if a client cusses mm -hmm. at you and yells at you, we are getting rid of that client. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, they have a million dollar case. <laughs> and if that's the case- A little bit like, less respectful. <laughs> you can shit on me a little bit more. <laughs> because, and here's the reason why, okay? There's the joke, but then there's also the fact that if you have a million dollar case, you're probably seriously injured. There could be an element of a traumatic brain injury. You probably aren't acting the same way that you did before. We have had clients that no longer like their children mm. as a result of the accident that they've been in. This is very serious. Mm -hmm. And being able to understand whether someone is simply frustrated with the situation versus just frustrated with you is important. So even though I say it as a joke and it's kind of like one of the one of the themes in the firm, it's also, guys, we have these cases that we categorize as super VIP. Those are the ones that are valued at a million dollars or more. Those require a little more attention to detail. You need to sit, spend some time with the client. You need to talk to them. You need to see what their family situation is like because you're not going to get those pieces out of them. All right, let's get to T. Wh when is the last time you fired a client and for what reason? The last time I fired a client, look, to be honest, um, you know, we have about 80 people in the company right now. So I don't talk to the clients as much. Um, I empower my team to make those decisions. So one of my most important contributions to the company is empowering my leadership team to make executive decisions. That includes hiring, that includes firing, that includes investing, that includes learning and growing. And if they're scared of making these decisions, then I've just hired smart people to tell them what to do mm -hmm. instead of the other way around. So my team has fired clients before. I'm personally not the one because you know I don't get emotionally attached but I will give you an example because you want some tea mm -hmm. let me give you some so um, we just settled a case for three hundred and seventy two thousand five hundred dollars and the client after all the expenses and everything else this was a litigation case took several years to finish the client was walking away with a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and this was after all the expenses were paid, litigation costs. It, it costs a lot of money to build up these cases. Overall, I would say this is a good result. Um, it could be fantastic if we did the risk of going to trial, but there's also the risk of getting less money at trial, partly because the client was not very likable. Mm. And so when the client talked to me and said, hey, I need basically more money because she looked at the number and said, hey, I'm not happy with this result. She basically went on this soliloquy about how horrible and unethical I was for charging my full fee. And even though she was making less than, she was making more than we were as a firm. So that, I think that's fair, right? Like we get, we charge for a service and we mm. should get paid for that service. But she said, you know, I just think it's unethical and unfair. And this is why lawyers are considered slimy in the industry. And this is why, you know, I don't trust lawyers and all this stuff and was really attacking, not just me personally, but my entire profession. And after she vented, I told her, okay, I'm just going to assume that all of the disrespect and the condescending remarks that you just made were because you were frustrated with the situation and not frustrated with me. And I respect and I understand that you've been through a serious accident and this is something that no one wants to go through and it's not a fun experience. And so I'm not going to let my ego just shut down the conversation and say, let's just move on. I don't care what you think. You're being disrespectful to me. I'm going to charge my fee, take it or leave it. So we had this 
five, 10, 15 minute conversation. At the end of it, we were both laughing, we were talking, and it was really good conversation. And we came to an agreement where I said, look, I can talk to one of the owners of these medical providers and see if they can offer an, a more serious discount. Uh, it's obvious we've already requested a discount on this medical provider, but I can go and ask for a favor on your behalf and I can explain the situation. You're going to graduate school. You need a little bit more money. Here's the situation. And we were able to get it resolved. But at the end of the conversation, I told her, look, you're clearly a very smart person. And there's a difference between intellectual intelligence and emotional intelligence. Sure. You are definitely an intellectually intelligent person. And most people you come in contact with will not be that intellectually intelligent. But something you should pay attention to is other people's emotional intelligence. And how you came at me and basically shit on me for the first mm -hmm. five minutes of this conversation, most people would shut down right away. Mm -hmm. Especially lawyers, doctors, and professionals that you're going to be running into because they have this ego. They won't allow someone to talk down and just condescendingly and disrespectfully towards them. So I would just caution you that it's more important for people to feel respected than for you to feel right. If you just make people feel respected and heard, you can get whatever you want. But understand that most people are not going to keep up with you intellectually. <laughs> and sometimes the things that you say are going to come off in a really rude way. Right. I just, I decided to ignore all of those things, but I'm just giving you this constructive feedback. She's like, look, I, I really appreciate it. It's been a really frustrating situation. But bottom line is, I personally don't fire clients anymore. I empower my team to do those things. My role is not CEO, it's CPS. It's chief problem solver. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like a firefighter. You know, They come at me with fires and I tell them the solution.